Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Seeking the Scares YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about my new vintage KLH Model 23s and more or less how they compare to my modern Magnapan Point 7s. Let's get into it. So right off the bat, I want to start this off by saying that they are both great speakers in their own scenarios. There's some things I'd use my Magnapans for that I would not use those KLHs for. So first thing I want to talk about is how the Magnapans are a very directional speaker and they focus in on one zone. If you're sitting in the right spot, they sound amazing. But if you're anywhere outside of that, they can kind of sound um, a little like mono-channeled or just off. But if you're in that sweet spot, they're perfect. What the KLHs are great for is they just fill a room with a lot of sound. They're really good at taking a space. And what I've learned from my time with them is that it doesn't really, your room acoustics don't play as big of a role as it does with something like a Magnapan. And if you're playing it at a softer volume, something a little, little uh, quieter, even if you're in the kitchen or anywhere else in the house, as long as you don't have doors closed, you can really still hear it at a nice tone, nice and clear. And my intention for them is to have music in our living area of our home. When we have friends over, we can play some music and just background noise, or if we wanna, you know, a day clean the house or wanna have some music outside of our main listening room, we can have that. So what's interesting is I actually didn't run those speakers off of that TV. So the volume coming out of the TV is just the TV speakers. I don't have that hooked up to anything else. What I did do is from my Pioneer um, receiver, it has a speaker A and a speaker B mode. What I did was I ran speaker wire under the house to our living room and I popped it out there, put this, the what I want to be my B speaker wire through wired everything up and now I have my magnet pans on my A mode and my uh, new KLHs on the B mode. Which has been really nice having the option to move between rooms and also hearing a direct comparison. You know, when you're in here and you play the magnet pans, you can listen to them for a second. You walk out there, you listen to those and you can really tell a difference between the two kind of systems you have. Whereas in here, everything sounds very very sharp and precise. Out there you can really hear that vintage gear coming out with a vintage receiver and a vintage amp and some vintage speakers. The sound coming out of those KLHs is just very warm, very rich, very bass heavy. And they sound great in there. I'm not sure if I'd want them in here though. So that's why I put them out there. These Mattapans are staying in here for sure. But I put those out there and I like them out there a lot. Let's get into some of the specs about the Model 23s in particular and things that I really like about that speaker. So on the Model 23s, they actually share the same woofer and tweeter as the KLH Model 5s of the same era. Those speakers are somewhere between 1965, I believe, and 72. I'm not sure what year that exact speakers were purchased or what uh, what runoff of the assembly line they were. They're somewhere between that range. I also found some specs stating that they're about 25 watt speakers. I'm not too sure if I trust that measurement. Maybe that's what they rated them for back then, but I'd say they probably handle a lot more power than that. Uh, a good way of kind of judging how much well, not really a good way of judging how much power a speaker can take, but one of the ways you can kind of tell if a speaker's going to handle a lot of power is if it's really heavy. And you pick those things up, they're probably, they're not the heaviest things in the world, but they are probably about 20, 20, 30 pounds each, each uh, speaker cabinet. And another thing I wanted to talk about about the cabinet itself is, I mean, they're, it's a thick walled cabinet. The mahogany wood on that, I think it's mahogany is what I read, I was trying to do some research on those, is about at least, if not an inch, at least three-fourths of an inch thick, and it's solid. They're built really sturdy, I mean, and you can really tell that that box is not, 
not flexing. I mean, there that sound is contained, and that's really impressive for being a sealed sub or a sealed speaker. So there's no ports on that speaker, which is nice for in there, especially because we don't want to have them out three, four feet off the wall like we do in here. I want them to be right against the wall, out of the way, inconspicuous, so we can use them when we want to. We're not using them; it's not a big deal. They're right up against the wall. It's going to have a little bit of uh, drawbacks being against the wall, even a sealed box. But for me, my purposes, I can't tell a difference and sonically. And they're working out great so far. If you can run across any uh, vintage uh, KLHs, look into them. It's not just the Model 5s that were good sounding. I mean, these Model 23s are also very nice speakers. I mean, especially sharing the same same actual, you know, woofer and tweeter as the Model 5s. They sound great. So now that we've talked about the speaker specs a little bit, let's get into some of the quirks of this speaker. Because it's a little different, especially being from a different time. They did things a little differently back then. So one thing if you're considering buying a vintage KLH speaker is the speaker terminals. So on the rear, I saw that they weren't banana plugs, which isn't a big deal. I figure it's a normal kind where, not normal, but the standard kind I've seen a lot, where you uns unscrew it, and I'll show a photo of what it looks like there. You put the speaker wire through a hole, screw it back down, and it clamps it tight. But these terminals, which I haven't done yet because I didn't have any, need, um, you need to kind of crimp on some spades so that you can go around that post and then screw it down. So I'm be doing that shortly. I know it looks a little ugly in the photo, but uh, I'll get that fixed right away. I just wanted to get them wired up so I could hear them. And um, yeah. <laughs> so next thing I wanna talk about that's a little unique about this speaker is the, sub the, the woofer's cone uh, in particular. It's a reverse mounted cone. So on a normal subwoofer, you would have that part that with, on the edge rim of the speaker, it uh, bulbs out and then you have your cone. And that's the surround that is the part that flexes in and out and produces your bass. On this speaker is actually inverted. So that bulb that usually protrudes out goes in. Um, I haven't been able to find any reason for sonically why they would do that. It might have just been pure aesthetics or a fear of the surround hitting the the speaker uh, great I'm not really sure just a quirk about this speaker and I think other KLH's um, speakers did this as well I think it looks pretty neat it's a little different when you pull off that grill see that but that was pretty cool and let's go on to next part <laughs> Another thing I did want to compare about the vintage KLH Model 23s to these Magnapans is the force it takes to drive them. Magnapans are notorious for being hard to, hard to drive, and that's not the case with those KLHs. When I have my Magnapans running, I, I turn the volume up for like a, um, a casual listening where it's not super loud, but it's loud enough where you can't talk over it about halfway on my amplifier or my receiver rather not my amplifier and when I'm out there listening to the KLHs I have it turned all the way down to maybe a quarter volume and that's about you know you can go louder than that but that's really a, a nice listening volume is about a quarter and there are some benefits to not having to push your amplifier so hard when you're talking about speakers. I mean, if, if you have an amplifier that's overrated for your speakers, your amplifier is not struggling to try and push those. I don't think this amplifier is struggling though to push these Magnapans, but it's definitely not struggling to push those, which is nice considering I have about probably a 30 foot run of speaker wire going underneath the house to that room. So it's nice knowing that there's not a whole bunch of power being drawn out of those with being so far away in such a long span. 
All right, now that we've talked about these speakers a little bit, let's, we're gonna give you a chance to listen to them. I know that's not the best way to have a microphone uh, trying to pick up a speaker. The best way is gonna be in person. If you have a chance to go down to a local store and listen to a set of speakers, that's the best way. But this is what I got. I'm gonna try and use the microphone that I have here to pick up the sound off of the speakers. Um, one thing to note is that the music that I played the recording wasn't the best. The recording itself sounded a little scratchy, so keep that in mind. But I'll play that right now and see you in a second. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe for more. I'll be posting some more content here shortly. Also, with these KLHs, I'm thinking about refurbishing them. If you guys would like to see that where I sand them down and just refresh the stain on them and clean them up, let me know. I'll make a video about that as well. Until then, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.